Hi everyone, it's me Lauren Gill and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that y'all are here. And if you haven't noticed, we've changed up the setup a little bit. Anyways, so with all of that aside, this is gonna be our layout a little bit now. It's weird that this room has kind of turned into my studio situation, um, but I love seeing people with lifestyle backgrounds and this is very much my aesthetic right now is just books and random knickknacks. So without further ado, today's video is just a mid-year check-in as far as what I've been reading. We're gonna dive into it, so stay tuned, stick around if you're into something like that, keep on watching. But before we do begin, I just wanna remind you to like, subscribe, and follow. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. That is my first milestone for me. And at 100 subscribers, we will be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. And yeah. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Also, speaking of Charmander, on my eyes today is the ColourPop Pokemon palette. Um, and if you can't figure it out, I use the greens in the palette today. Um, tall grass is in my crease. I did use a little bit of Fossil and Pewter City down here to blend out the brow or up to the brow bone. Um, Fainted is on my outer V and lower lash line, a mix of those two to smoke out the lower lash line. I've got Viridian City. I think that's how you say it. It's been a while since I've watched Pokemon, but Viridian City is on the center of my lid, blending in this lighter metallic with my deeper matte on the outer V. And then Celadon City, Celadon? I can't freaking remember how to pronounce this. Um, this one is on my like center of my lid. And I also almost forgot, I did use this shade here, Elite Four, on my inner corner, lower lash line, and then brow bone as well. So this palette, I'm not going to do a review on it. I'll do a little snippet right now. Um, there's some duds in this palette. This is not the, there's pa shadows in this palette that are not the ColourPop formula that we all know and love. I can tell you this isn't worth it if it's not on sale. We'll leave it at that. Um, anyways... Now let's get into the books that I've read for the year, what I plan to read the second half of the year, what I'm currently reading, and just talk all the bookish things as of right now. I have only read nine books <laughs> since the beginning of this year. Um, my goal for this year is 24 books for 2024, and that gives me two books a month. So I am a little bit behind, but I had some major life updates that had happened. Long story short, my husband's overseas, I'm here, he's 13 hours ahead, so that happened at the beginning of January, we thought I was going with him, and then things fell through, so I couldn't, whole freaking thing. But anyways, the first half of the year was kind of crazy, I'm surprised I read as many books as I could. Uh, let's just break it down by order of how I read them, if that makes sense. So, the first one. First book I read for 2024 was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to The Hunger Games, or more so, not a prequel. Well, it is a prequel, but it's Cornelius Snow's story, if you don't know. The movie came out November of 2023. So much in this book, I feel like, was obviously left out. And I wouldn't say the, the storyline of the movie follows fairly similar to the book, except the book obviously gives you a lot more detail. Um, I feel like there's just certain aspects of what happens in the movie that you can see being portrayed, but it's just not, you can't portray it without having the extra backstory within the book, you know? Does that make sense? Like, you can't get as descriptive with how someone is acting on screen versus what can be described in the book. That's what I'm trying to say. So there is a lot of like, odds and ends in the book that's just, it makes the that snap in Cornelius Snow so much worse, honestly. The relationship with Lucy Gray is, it's obviously a prominent storyline and it's part of his character build, but I feel like, I don't know, she's a little bit more sporadic in the book because there's a lot more to the book and it wasn't so focused on her as it was in the movie. So um, if you are someone that doesn't really care about the franchise, then obviously the movie's pretty good. But if you are interested in the itty bitty gritties <laughs> that you can get from the book, it is a really good book. 
And I will say I have actually not read the full Hunger Games trilogy. I know it's almost like blasphemy in a way. I love this as like a standalone book and I love it as a connection, as a connection to the Hunger Games trilogy. So this book actually makes me want to read the trilogy. Um, so I'm super excited about it. I'm excited to see just how much Suzanne Collins has grown as a writer um, because I know some people say that the, the Hunger Games trilogy is really good and written really well. It's just a little bit drier than a lot of like YA dystopian book stories or book series. So I'm curious to compare those to this now that this is a newer release. And I mean, it was a phenomenal book. I recommend it through and through. I don't know, I just really, really liked it. And I think that, I don't know, I just, I like already would want to go back and reread it, right? And just see what else I've missed. But this was definitely a great start to the year. And really what got me jump started on wanting to get back into reading series because at the, the second half of 2023 to the end of 2023, I was just reading standalone novels. So this is what got the jump start for me on reading series. So this is probably a good like eight out of 10 because I prefer a little bit more action, a little bit more romance for it to be a 10 out of 10, but I do really appreciate Suzanne Collins writing style now that I'm, you know, 25. Second one, we're coming in strong. I read Fourth Wing. <laughs> um, Fourth Wing. What could you not say about it? So if you don't know, and I'm sure most people do know, it's about dragons. Um, so this girl, Violet, she goes to a, a college university kind of style of dragon writers and, you know, scribes who are like the historians of this world. And it's, you know, there's like four different quadrants. Um, there's healers, there's scribes, forget the other one, and then there's the writers. And I can't remember. Anyways, it's set up, it's got a little bit of like military structure to it. But Violet is kind of an underdog through and through, except she's a powerhouse at the same time. Like, she's not the typical trope of, oh my god, no one likes me, it's so hard. Um, no, she's like, well, I know I'm small and I know I might look weak, but I'm still gonna do my best to kick ass. And I think that she's a phenomenal character and there's a bunch of other characters that she meets. There's romance. There's like, it's definitely um, enemies to lovers. There's, you know, the brooding mysterious Zayden who is the, um, the love interest. <laughs> Forgot what that was called. There's multiple dragons. There's, there's a reason there's two on here. Um, and I love the contrast between the two different dragons. I love the, I love all the dragon characters because there's a few of them. Um, I absolutely love the dialogue in this book. I love the build in the book. I love the, the plot. I love the setting. And I, when I tell y'all, I devoured this book. Like I ate it up so fast. Um, and I have said this time and time again since the moment I picked this book up and started reading that this is something I see being the next Hunger Games or the next Harry Potter or this is definitely a series that I can see become a franchise very, very fast. And I am so excited and very nervous if that does happen, if this does hit the big screen. But this is so fun. Um, when I tell you guys I reacted almost to every chapter with a physical reaction. I can't get enough of it. I think I am going to love reading this book by book. And it's funny because I always wind up catching on to the hype of something well after the fact. I'm happy I jumped on a bag bandwagon with this book because it's kind of nerve wracking and fun and so exciting to like read it, wait for the next book to come out, devour it, you know? So it's fun. And I, I just, I think that this is a good one. If you like like war college and you like dragons and there's griffins involved and there's wyvern and there's a couple different mythological creatures in this book. So if you're into that, then definitely 
get this one. This I definitely rate 10 out of 10 because I love this book and this is probably going to be one of my favorite series of all time. So the next one is a single one-off. What I was trying to do was read one of the books in the series because I have a couple up here. Then read a standalone and then go back to this series and kind of do like a refresher in between a book and a series. So I did that a little bit and then I quickly got off track. But the next book that I had read was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager or Sager. I haven't figured out how to say the last name, but this book is freaking wild, y'all. If you like thrillers, mysteries, like murder mystery, I think you're gonna like this one. The twist at the end, I never saw coming. And usually I figure out the, pl the plot and the twist fairly fast. Like my husband hates watching movies with me because I always figure them out. So this book, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Just when I thought I knew what was happening, it took a turn. So this one is about this girl named Casey Fletcher. She is kind of like a, not a B-rated actress, but she is a actress who's been in like a few TV shows and stuff like that. So she's pretty well known, but she goes to this cabin on this secluded like lake property um, because she's a recovering alcoholic pretty much. And so what happens is she meets a bunch of different characters and there's a house across the lake, hence the name of the book, um, that she talks to this other woman and they ha only have a couple of brief encounters and then she's dead. So if you liked Woman in the Window because, you know, it was like a character who was seeing it from an outside perspective, kind of like if you were reading a book about a murder and you liked the the suspense of she saw it but no one believes her or like how does she figure out how to make it how to like get the killers almost this is kind of in the same realm of that except there is a supernatural element to it um and so that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to be a spoiler for anyone um this one is definitely like a a nine out of ten for me um, honestly, even though I know what happens at the end, I would still go back and reread it because I love the whole actress gone alcoholic and like how tightly knit the community is at this lake property. And I don't know, it's just a really good take on murder mystery without being so cut and dry. I'll just read what the back says real quick. It says, it's a familiar psychological thriller structure until everything changes a page turning climax by USA Today. So I think that is the perfect little synopsis of this book where it's like, like it seems like you know how it plays out because it's like a typical storyline of like the person meets with the person who gets murdered and then they're like, oh crap. And then they want to like figure it out and it kind of devolves from there. But it's unexpected what happens in the end and it's completely off the wall. Then I definitely recommend this one. The next one I read was actually an ebook that I read in a book club that I started this year um, with a couple co-workers and it's called American Mother. And it's written by, I'm looking at my tablet, Colin McCain, with McCann maybe, Colin McCann, and then Diane Foley, and that's the mother of Jim Foley, who was the journalist who was over in, it was over in the Middle East, because I cannot for the life of me remember exactly where it was that he had gotten captured. It's about the reporter that got captured and was decapitated on live television back in 2014. I want to say uh, he was captured by ISIS and then he was tormented and tortured and then murdered, unfortunately. So the story is written by the mother and kind of like what she went through as a mother dealing with him being gone all the time, losing him. And honestly, it was a really good read. It was a little under 300 pages, I want to say, um, and it was very heart wrenching because it's a mother talking about losing her child. And I feel like parents losing their children is probably one of the saddest things you could ever experience because you know, you're supposed to watch them grow and they're obviously supp supposed to outlive you and things. So I wouldn't know I'm not a mom and I haven't lost anyone, but couldn't imagine the level of pain that you go through with losing a child. So this book was so good about explaining the good that can come from the bad. 
Um, and there's a lot of things that this woman, she's a very religious woman, that I couldn't get behind because again, I it comes from a place of forgiveness and having a really strong connection with God, which she talks about in the book, that I just couldn't get past. And it almost made me angry that she wasn't more angry. But when I look back on the story and I think about the book, I think about how powerful and how strong of a woman she actually had to be to forgive the people who were involved with the, the murder of her, her child. And um, I don't really care for the column guy. I don't really care for his writing style. He's a little too repetitive and like kind of redundant, but the parts that she had written, this Diane Foley, were actually really good. And it kind of really shed a light on, even in all the bad, like the lack of governmental help, the lack of, um, politician help, like all of that. Everyone that they knew, other journalists, other people who had a little bit of power, um, Jim Foley's brother who was in the military, you know, all of these people banding together to try and find some answers, find him, um, and figure out like how to help because it wasn't just him who had been captured. And then, you know, as you read the book, you realize that this happens more often than it's shown. And so it really sheds a light on how lacking the government can be in these situations and just how powerful the everyday Joe can be. So really very, very polarizing comparisons, but very good, very eye-opening. It is very sad and a very emotional book, but I think it is a really good read as far as nonfiction goes. Moving along, I went back to fantasy and I read The Lost Apparel. I almost said a parakeet. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Pinner. This is a really good one. This was definitely like not traditionally something I would go for, but it was a really cute story, very well rounded, but was also left with a little bit of like a cliffhanger. Um, but it is an awesome standalone book and I love the freaking cover of it. It's definitely giving me the witchy vibes, but basically this follows three women or like two women and a girl and it's between the past and the present. And in the present, there is a Carolina Parswell who is going through a separation from her husband. So she goes to London to discover clues about a lost apothecary, kind of trying to figure out like what happened to it, where it went, um, also while trying to figure out like a life crisis at the same time. So there's like drama involved that's kind of relatable. And then it kind of backsteps to, what was it? Um, 18th century London. And there's two characters, there's Nera, Nella. There's Nella who is the apothecary owner and it's it was her mother's and she just kind of carried through with the the storefront and then there's a little girl I think she's like 12 13 maybe her name is Eliza and she is at first a customer picking something up for her mistress's husband and basically things go south and then those two are connected and then it kind of plays out as to where the apothecary ended and how Carolina, no, Caroline ended up with her clues to find it. So it's really interesting. There's a little bit of mystery. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of murder. There's a little bit of drama. Um, and through and through, this was just a really fun one to read and it's really good refresher and was really nice to read after the freaking heavy uh, discussion and whirlwind that American Mother was. So out of all, this is something that I would rate probably like five or six for me. Like even though it was a cute story, it's not something I would probably go back and reread but it was a really good one at the same time. So it's not like bad. It just wasn't my favorite. Another one by Sarah Pinner that I had read was the London Seance Society. I do not have this book physically because I borrowed it from a friend of mine. And that one was another one that was really good. I didn't like it as much as The Lost Apothecary, but it wasn't bad. I would say it was pretty good. Um, There's a little bit of that like murder mystery again, but I do feel like the book was a little dry. It just didn't keep me going as much as the other one. So of the two, The, the Lost Apothecary was definitely a little bit better written in my opinion. The characters in the London Seance Society were kind of like ooh, boring to be honest. Um, except there's a little bit of spiciness that happens between Lena and uh, Vondelin, I think is how you say her name. So if you like a little bit of like LGBTQ, Plus, it was cute. It was a nice little add-on, you know, but like it 
also wasn't necessary in my opinion. Like, nothing against it by any means. It just, to me, it didn't add much to the story now that I think about it. But yeah, it just added a little bit of romance, I guess, if you really wanted that. But yeah, so that book I would say was definitely like maybe a 4 out of 10. Moving along, the next one that I read was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins, Re Jenkins Reid. I love her books. A lot of people say, there's a lot, people that say they don't like them and people that say they do, and I'm one of the people that do like her stories. There's always a little bit of tra tragedy involved. There's always a little bit of romance. There's, every time I read one of her books, it makes me appreciate my relationship with my husband so much more, just because it, it just gives me perspective on like, things could be worse. Um, and this one, it's about Hannah Martin, who is 29 and doesn't have her life together. So she winds up moving back home to Los Angeles from New York. And she, you know, gets back together with her best friend, Gabby. And then her ex-boyfriend from high school comes along. His name's Ethan. And she goes to a bar, I think, with the two of them. And then... From there, there's kind of like this either or situation that happens. So she could either stay with Gabby and things unfold or she can go with Ethan and things unfold. And either way, aren't bad. There's definitely a worst case scenario between the two decisions, but it plays out as both situations have happened or they're transpiring. And so each time you're like, I need more information, it switches back to the other like what if situation. So it's really interesting, very gripping. Um, but in the end, both outcomes are not that bad. And I think this is just really good. Like if you look at this kind of on a morality level, I would say that overall it just kind of puts into perspective that no matter what happens, good can come from the bad. Um, so yeah, I just really love her books. I want to make it a point to read all of them. I have four back there, another one that's on my TBR, and then this one that has now been read. But I love her books, so I'm biased, and I always put these high. And this one, just with how it was like, it got me, I would definitely say this is like a, a 10 out of 10 for me, which is really hard because I love all of her books. And maybe when I read them all, I'll do a ranking. We'll have to see. But this is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me just because of how it tugged on my heartstrings and how as soon as I was done with a chapter with one scenario and it made me go into the other scenario, I was like, what? And I just kept reading it and I literally read this in one day because it's so good. And then I got two more books that I've read this year. And they're both part of a series. So the series is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. You guys, I didn't realize this series was going to have such a chokehold on me. Let me dive in. So the first one is called The Inheritance Game. And basically, this rich, rich, rich man, Tobias Hawthorne, has, has passed away. And there's a will reading. And his whole inheritance goes to a girl named... What's her name? Avery has to go to this hearing or this will reading and she's never met this man, never met the family. So she goes and she inherits the entire inheritance. But then with that, there are stipulations that she has to follow to receive the full inheritance, which I'm not gonna give anything away, but there's a couple of them. And she has like a lawyer that's like helping her through. She's got security. She's got so many different characters, the whole family. There's four brothers, which are, Nash, Grayson, Jameson, or Jameson, and then Xander. And all four of them are all very different characters. Um, there's a little bit of romance between two of them. I'm not going to say which ones. But yeah, overall, I could not put this down. I read this in literally a week. Um, and I just love it. There is, there's so much mystery in it. And just when you think you figured it out, something else pops up. And the entire time I was reading this, I was literally like, what? The entire time, because I just, you don't get a break with this. If something's not, if something's to figure out, then it's gonna keep happening. And you leave off on a cliffhanger, which results into reading the second book, which is the Hawthorne Legacy. It picks up right after the Inheritance Games, but the whole premise of this book is they are searching for a specific something 
and they go to a couple different places all over the world. There's more romance in it. There is a little bit more. There's so many more puzzles. So I just, I think that this is a phenomenal trilogy that is happening. And I don't want to give too much away because you just need to go read them for yourself. So I'm going to stop with that. <laughs> These have been phenomenal. These are a freaking 12 out of 10 right now because I cannot put the, the books down. <sighs> Okay, so I do have a couple books that I'm currently reading, and the first one, it's not here, it's actually at my work, um, and it is The Final Gambit, which is the, or Gambit, the third installment in the Inheritance of Games series. I'm actually almost done with that book. I literally almost read that entire book in one day, which is not something I do. I like to pace myself, if that tells you any more about how much I love the series. And then that one is so good. Oh, it's so good. It is literally a true like climax to a, a trilogy. So I'm super excited about that. So that will be in my December reading wrap up. And then the other one that I am currently reading is Iron Flame, which is the second installment in the Fourth Wing series. This one is very controversial and I didn't realize it. So a lot of people said that they don't really care for this one in comparison to Fourth Wing. And there's a lot of people that have said that they just, uh, what is it, DNF to this, which is did not finish. And there's a lot of people that's like, after reading this, I don't want to read the third one that's coming out in January. And I'm like, what? Because I'm reading this and I am 290 pages in. And I freaking love it. Now, I will say it's not as action packed as the first one. There isn't as much combat, I guess you could say, as the first book. But it's still good. And I know a lot of people are like, I hate the back and forth between Violet and Zayden, which is obviously the main character and then her love interest. But I think it's being portrayed very well. It's not just like, oh, I can't be with you because of this, that, and the third. It's more so like they don't know how to make their relationship progress because of like morally wrong things that they don't agree with for each other. So like, for example, Zayden is not... He's not telling her everything that he should be, but his reasoning is because it's trying to protect her, which is a typical trope, I feel like. But then she is like, I love him. I'm not gonna tell him because I need him to tell me he's gonna be honest with me. And I'm like, I, I, I get that, I get that, I get that. Now I will say, every time she she's him, she doesn't have to say it to like, or think it, you know? But you best believe I already pre-ordered the third installment into this series because I can't not. These are my children now. <laughs> so those are the two books I'm currently reading. Let me hop into what I plan to read in the upcoming months and then we'll see if I actually read them <laughs> when I do a end of year wrap up. But anyways, let's jump into that. I mostly have series here that I kind of want to read. Reading more series is probably going to take up the rest of the year. But I feel like I have to read The Hunger Games again. So I've already read the first book. I just never read the second two because I read this back in middle school. And like I told you guys, wasn't really feeling it. Didn't really get it. Now that I'm older and I appreciate it for what it is, I want to really dig into the trilogy here. Also because Hamish's story is supposed to be released, it's supposed to be his story and it should be coming out, I think it was like March of 2025. So I wanna read these before that book because I want to, like I know Hamish in the movies, but I wanna know how he is in these books because I feel like he's even more asinine to we love him in the books from what I been, have been told, so. Yeah, these are on my radar. Another series that's pretty popular and there's a third book already coming out, but it's the Light Lark series. And y'all, I'm gonna be honest, I tried reading the first book and I couldn't get into it. So I put it down, forgot about it. My friend at work wanted to read them, so I gave her Light Lark and then I actually went to Barnes and Noble. I actually went to Barnes and Noble and then I couldn't help myself because she raved about this one, so I picked up the second one knowing that I put this down. Probably a bad purchase, I don't know, but a lot of people said that they really liked this series. So I'm gonna try and reread this again because there's these two and now there's a third book. So it's all happening very, very fast and I don't wanna be behind. So I have these two on my list. 
Another one that I'm kind of interested in, the A Touch of Darkness, I think is the series um, by Scarlett St. Clair and it's Hades and, Perse uh, Hades and Persephone's story. So it's definitely based on Greek mythology. Um, I didn't realize that I had picked up, I think, the first and the third book, which is A Touch of Malice. There's, I think there's a book in between these, but I did not know that. I really want to read these. I'm really intrigued because it's definitely supposed to be, like, enemies to lovers, which I think is kind of my favorite romance trope. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm definitely intrigued. I'm also, like, I've always been into Greek mythology, but I like spinoffs of it. So this is a series that I'm really interested in. I think there's like six or seven books, so it's a pretty chunky series, but it's not like super thick of books. So I feel hopefully it's an easier series to read through. And then the last one that's gonna take me some time is <laughs> um, The Lord of the Rings. And I love Lord of the Rings. Like I love the movies, I love the lore, but I have never read the actual series. Which is insane. This is the 50, uh, 50th anniversary special edition that I got in the mall in Syracuse at one point. I'm super excited. It has the trilogy in it. And then I do need to work on getting the actual, like, The Hobbit. Because I do want to read that one first, obviously, and then read this. Um, but yeah, she's a thick book. But I'm so excited to dive into this because I love Lord of the Rings. And I'm disappointed in myself for not having read, read the book any sooner. But now that I'm like really into books, not just for the story, but now I'm getting into like the actual, like I'm more appreciative of, of the writing and the detail in the writing and not just the plot, but the world building of it all. Because when I was a kid, I didn't care about world building as much. Um, but now I really, really appreciate it. And this is the big chunky at the end <laughs> that I'm trying to throw in there at some point. Okay, so, huh, finally got through all of that. If you stuck around to the end, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any book recommendations, please put them down below. I'm so interested. Like I said, I love psychological thrillers. I love a good fantasy, so let me know your recommendations. Thank you once again for hanging out with me. I'm gonna hop off and probably clean this makeup off because my eyelids are like heavy. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I really hope you enjoyed this just chit chat and books. I feel like it's a little bit different than my regular content. Still something that I really want to include because it is definitely a part of who I am and I just think it's super fun to kind of take a break from the makeup side of things. Uh, so anyways, if you did like this video, please like down below as well. It lets me know what you guys are interested in. So, and if you're already liking and commenting, you might as well subscribe. If you're here until the end, you might as well to subscribe. Like, let's be real. But anyways, I'm gonna hop off and I just really appreciate you guys being here and hopefully we're at 100 subscribers by the time this, the next video comes out. So stay tuned for a giveaway. Um, if we hit 100 before this video goes up, then read down below. Without further ado, I'm gonna hop off and, and I hope you have a great day, night, whenever you're watching this, and I really hope to see you in another one, so bye.